Hey there, everyone. It's Felipe here. I am in Lençóis, Chapada Diamantina, in Reservado Cajuzeira, our farm here. Today, I want to talk a bit about this little buddy here, which is a little buddy that I love. And we use it a lot over here because we've got a strong influence from the semi-arid region. So, if you're anywhere in a semi-arid or subhumid region, meaning, you know, anywhere ranging from 400 millimeters of rain, which equals about 17 to 18 inch inches, I think, all the way up to 1,000, 1,200 millimeters, which equals about 50 to 60 inches of rain you should be using these these are amazing plants you know they grow when there's no rain and they conserve a lot of water they have a lot of water in them so they bring a lot of water to the system and i really plant them in a very high density at least 20,000 plants per hectare and i'm really thinking when i plant these I'm really thinking of pruning them and putting the material on the soil. You know, if you want to produce it for animal feed, it's still a great idea to plant it in a very dense stand. If you want to produce fruits, then obviously this variety doesn't produce um, fruits that can be sold. Um, I've got a lot of mosquitoes around right now, but that's okay. So there are varieties which give good fruits, right? Uh, this is the prickly pear. That's how it's called. I haven't uh, said its name yet. The prickly pear or, or the punchia fig, you know, in Portuguese, it's called the fruit. It's called Indian fig, figo indiano in Portuguese. And, but this has lots of uses. You know, we eat it, this, the leaf, this is a leaf. It's got a different name. It's cla in the Portuguese it's cladodio. In English it must be cladodium or cladod or something. And so we eat this and it's very nutritious and it's delicious actually. So there are lots and lots of varieties. Some are more suited to subhumid regions, some are more suited to semi-arid regions. And this little buddy here is someone I've been looking for for a long time because this is a dwarf variety and it's great for covering the soil so you can have it underneath your fruit trees. It's really, you know, it kind of crawls. There are varieties that grow all the way up to five meters and this one is just a little crawling buddy. And so it's really great for having a green cover to your soil and by planting it in a really dense stand, you're gonna have great coverage and a nice production of a very juicy organic material. And obviously you can feed it to your animals when you're in a, uh, in a drought or you know any time of the year where you don't really have grass. So let's plant these buddies. So here's what happens. I like to plant it, the whole thing, right? The whole racket, we call it a racket. Each leaf or cladod or clododium, I don't know how it's called. And I actually like to plant it, you know, cause they grow like this, right? You've got one and then the other one grows like this. And I like to plant a big one, you know, with two rackets. So, you know, I just plant it like this, boom, on the soil, because it grows faster. But I only got two of these because I, you know, I brought them from a city. I was giving a lecture, you know, five, three, 400 kilometers from here. And I don't have these around. So it's, it was kind of an opportunity and I managed to get two of these. And so I'm not going to plant them like this because I can actually turn these two into 20 or 30 seedlings and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So 
basically you're just gonna chop it up in small pieces and i'm actually you could plant it directly on the soil but i'm gonna make seedlings actually in in you know in little there's a name for it but those little tubes you use for for producing seedlings so check it out i'm you know get a sharp scissor i recommend a katsumi japanese uh, it's the best scissor around that I know. You could use a sharp knife or whatever. Just make it sure it's sharp. So, as you can see, this is really, really juicy. So, I'm still going to chop it up more. But once you expose this juicy part, you know, the middle of it, uh, you need to leave it it needs to to heal right this part it needs it needs to dry out before you plant it if you put this in contact with the soil it's just gonna rot but i can still divide it split it into more parts you know so let's see how many seedlings we get ideally you want to leave at least, you know, three rows of, uh, I don't know if you can see it, there you go. You can see these little dots. This is where it's gonna, you know, root and sprout from. So you want to leave at least, a, you know, three rows of this. So over here, I've got three rows as well, but I'm still gonna divide this up into two. I could even do three. I think I'm gonna do three. So let's be bold. So, there you go. See? Small cubes. They're all gonna take root. This one can be divided up in two. So that gives me a right five. This one's a bit uh, length there. So I'm gonna make four. There you go. And then I still got this one. Let's go. I'm going to make three little sections and then I'm going to split them up. One, two, three, four. And then again, one, two, three this time. And this one, two. So there you go. I've got, let me show it to you. Change the camera, sorry for my finger. There you go. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So I've got eighteen from one, and I'm still gonna split this one up, so I'm gonna get thirty-four. Um so that's a big boom. And, you know, I'm going to put them in a nice prepared soil and in a little tube for, for seedlings. And I'm going to get 35 great seedlings of this prickly pear. And then from these 35, I'm going to make sure I plant them in a very nicely prepared soil, you know, with a nice mineral fertilizer. Th these are, they like um, good soil, you know, with high levels of potassium and phosphorus. And so I'm gonna plant them in a well-prepared soil so that they grow fast and and I get rewarded for, you know, planting them in, in these small pieces because obviously they're going to take longer to grow, but I'm going to have more of them. And then I'm going to continue splitting them up so that I can get to 100, 200. You know, I want, I need 10,000 of these at least. And so I'm really going to have to work, you know, this next year in order to multiply it obviously if i have an opportunity to go to to a place where i find it again 
I'm going to get more. But since I want to be self-sufficient, self-sufficient of these, of this material, here you go. I, I, I'm going to do it like this. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Um, click the like button if you liked it. Click the not like button if you didn't like it. Uh, leave us a comment if you've got any experience with prickly pear. Um, you know, leave a comment and and tell us about it. I'd really love to hear if you think this is this might be valuable to any friend. Share it with them. And if you haven't already, do take the time. It's only going to take two minutes. You know, and subscribe to our newsletter. You're going to be warned whenever we release a new video and you're going to get some extra content you know we always send a nice text with our videos and there's a lot more to come Diego Forge Academy is producing a lot of material and you want to be the first to know about it so make sure you subscribe you only get you're, you're only going to get one email per week and uh, you know we want to keep in contact with all of you so thank you for watching this is Felipe from Lensois Bahia and I wish you all a great day and keep on planting prickly pear thank you for watching and this is Diego Forge Academy signing out